Welcome to Category Theory, the beginner's introduction. I am Martin Codrington, and this is Lesson 1, Video 3 of 6. Last time, we gave the definition of a category in general, and a category of abstract sets and arbitrary mappings specifically. We saw that the definition consisted of two parts, the data of the category, and the rules these data must follow. We discussed the objects and arrows in S. Then, we immediately began to build our own concrete category based on S, Music S. We defined three objects and four maps. The objects were X, the set of pitch classes. This will form the basis of our formulations in music theory. Z, the set of pitch class names. There are 12 pitch classes, but as we saw in video one, the pitch classes corresponding to the black notes on the piano had two possible names. So Z has size 17. We're ignoring double sharps and flats on Teller Rail formulation. And lastly, we define L, the set of letter names of the pitch class names. This set has size 7. The four maps we define were 1, N from Z to X, which is assigned to each name is pitch class, 2, T from Z to L, which gave the letter name of each pitch class name. Then remember that the major and minor moles were what we shall call regular moles, as they contain only one type of each letter name so they can be represented as a map L to Z. These were the last two maps we constructed. 3, I from L to Z, which represents the major mode, and 4, J from L to Z, which represents the minor mode. At the end of each lesson, I'll create a document that describes all the maps and objects in Music S up until that point. I will call this document Description of Music S, IJ, where the index stands for the category at the end of lesson I, video J. I will create a document for the end of each video, even if nothing has changed, so that there's no confusion about where we are. At the end of the last video, we asked, how could we form more regular modes? We realized to do this was not as simple as just choosing the particular C and D, etc., because we could choose two different pitch class names with different letter names, but that matched the same pitch class. We realized we needed to combine the information in more than one map. Thankfully, composition, the combination of maps, is an axiom of the theory, and this is what we'll discuss today. Let's look at that definition again. It says that if we have an arrow F from A to B1, and an arrow G from B2 to C, then we can form the composite if and only if B1 equals B2. Let's look at the diagram on the bottom. The theory says that whenever we have a partial diagram like this, we can complete it by drawing an arrow at the bottom that represents the result of applying F, then applying G, G following F. This makes sense, doesn't it? If we can get from station A to station B by taking the F train, and we can get from station B to station C by taking the G train, then we can get from station A to station C by taking the G train after we take the F train. Or another way of saying that is the G train following the F train. One thing to note about composites is that we can give them new names. We can call G following F R, for example. We can redraw the diagram with R at the bottom. But one point of caution. We have to note that R equals G following F, because R could be a different function. Here's where the train analogy breaks down. I guess we could say that it's a direct train, the R train between station A and C. We could do this in two ways. We could list the equation R equals G following F, or we could simply say that this diagram commutes. A commutative diagram in any category is one in which all paths between two arbitrary objects must be interpreted as the same arrow. So if I said this diagram of R commutes, then you know R equals G following F. And this is the heart and soul of category theory. Every definition I will give you can be reduced to a diagram that can be said to commute. And all formulations we do will be the same. Now, for an abstract example of composition before we return to music S. Let's say we have the following three sets and the following two maps, F from A to B, and G from B to C. Before we go on, picture the cluster structure of those two maps. The theory tells us that we can form G following F from A to C, which we renamed R, by first applying F, then applying G, so that R of A0 is equal to G following F of A0 is equal to G of F of A0 is equal to G of B0, because F of A0 is equal to B0, which is equal to C0. And R of A1 is equals to G following F of A1, which is equals to G of F of A1, 
which is equals to g of b1, because f of a1 is equals to b1, which is equals to c0. Now you see that since we write the functions on the left of what we apply it to, now the rightmost function is applied first, and the leftmost apply last. So g following f is f first then g. Let's look at the map graph of these two functions. Here is the map graph of the two functions. Now the evaluation we did should be more clear. The only elements that were present in our equations were a0 and a1, because the composite must be a valid arrow in the category, so in set it must be a function defined on each element of the domain. b0 and b1, but not b2, because b2 is not in the image of f. c0, but not c1, although c0 is in the image of g, it is not in the image of g following f. No element that f links to links to it. Now here is the map graph of the composite on the right. Notice that there's nothing here about b, but we can see on the left that b, f, and g determine the structure of g following f. Also notice that in composition, clusters can remain the same size or increase in size. They can never decrease in size. Here f consisted of two one clusters, but g following f consists of one two cluster. Through the action of g, they were composed together to form a larger cluster. Keep this in mind. But now, let's turn to music S and explore some composites of our functions. There are three composites I would like to describe in music S. I'll describe two now. We have a map I from L to Z and a map J from L to Z, representing the major and minor scales respectively. If you look at description music S 1, 3, you will see that these maps are described. We also have a map N from Z to X, so we have the following diagrams which you must be able to turn into triangles by computing the composite, n following i and n following j. Let's call them i prime and j prime. And here they are listed. As you can see, there's nothing to compose in functions in S. As long as you have a chain of compatible maps of any number, we'll get to that part in the next lesson, you can compose them to form a new map from the domain of the first to the codomain of the last. There are other composites we can form in music S. Let's discuss one more, and that will serve as the perfect transition to the next video. Remember we have the minus scale as a map J from L to Z, and we have the map T from Z to L. The codomain of the first is the domain of the second, so we can form the composite T following J from L to L. If you look at it, you notice that T following J takes every element of L back to itself. We've mentioned another function of the same property, the identity function. So t following j is equals to 1l. This is only the case because t and j have a special relationship to each other, one that we will explore in lesson 2. So we've discussed the objects, arrows, and composition. In the next video, we'll discuss the last three, the identity arrow, the identity laws, and the associative laws.